Bergman's Thought is a new series of videos that will present Ingmar Bergman's psychology and philosophy, his outlook on the world and people as presented in his films and written works. They will therefore attempt to disclose some of the main and recurrent themes or ideas evoked in his creations, so as to craft an image of the director that will make his films easier to comprehend and act as an introduction of sorts for new viewers. Hopefully, these will also disclose such features in a manner that will entice people already appreciative of Bergman's film art. The troubles of communication between oneself and the others have been skimmed over in previous videos citing the works of Antonioni, Tarkovsky and Bergman, for example, as particularly interested in the subject. Arguably, to display oneself and come across to others in a complete, honest and definitive manner is a troublesome task that requires fluency, sincerity, ease and self-confidence, characteristics that are seldom found altogether in ordinary people. Naturally, most members of society would expect to simply be taken seriously by the mere frankness of their expression, yet somehow the words themselves seem to bear an overwhelming weight that is often insurmountable from the perspective of the listener. To convey an idea, a feeling or an emotion seems at times to be an intimidating endeavor that is, more often than not, tarnished by how the listener perceives the speaker, fatally exposing the drawbacks of verbal discourse. In one of the aphorisms present in The Trouble of Being Born, Emil Cioran takes this concept to its most extreme by saying that you'd have to be drunk or mad to even dare to resort to words, whatever those may be. At an early stage in Autumn Sonata, Bergman hints at this scourge in human communication during a monologue by Eva's husband that introduces the viewers to the film and contextualizes his condition. <laughs> vill jag tala om för henne att hon är älskad utan förbehåll. Men jag kan inte säga det på ett sånt sätt att hon tror mig. Jag saknar de rätta orden. Misunderstandings and misinterpretations are bound to happen in all exchanges of human dialogue, but in what way are these influenced by the way people see each other? which is often times shaped by their experiences and the personality that resulted therefrom. Indeed, two people can fail to communicate with one another, not just because of the form of their speech, but essentially because the discourse of one is a thought with another's mindset or outlook, a perspective that carries experience, awareness and assumptions with it. If two people that know each other profoundly, that are highly familiar or perhaps even know each other intimately on an emotional level, can be simultaneously so far apart, how much more to strangers or simple acquaintances? While Strawberries has a chilling conversation at a crucial point in the narrative that touches precisely on the issue of the bottomless chasm between two individuals, even when they are presumed to be close to one another. So I think you. That is his mother. A new old woman. It's cold all the time. På något sätt mer skrämmande än döden själv. Där står hennes son. Det är ljusårs avstånd mellan de där två människorna. Själv säger han att han är en levande död. Och så Ivald. Som håller på att bli lika ensam, kall och död. Faced with the tenebrous abyss that extends and separates two fellow human beings, and their inability to bridge that empty void betwixt them in a reliable manner, what solution is then left for mankind? Given that the forthright approach is frequently ineffective or downright unfit to reach the other, many people find themselves unable to resist the unconscious urge to slip into an artificial but more persuasive construction that adapts to external entities, so as to erase the possibility of conflict and protect their inner essence. It is in fact a negation of oneself, with the hope of linking or at least avoid clashing with those outside their perceived selfhood. Liv Ullmann, as Marianne, in Scenes of a Marriage, has a tremendous monologue as she reads from her diary to her cheating husband, standing as a moving reflection on her fabricated character as a means for self-defense. Sedan utvecklades lögnerna, hemlighållandet, bortvändheten av bara fart. Min far ville att jag skulle bli jurist som han själv. Jag antydde någon gång att jag helst av allt ville bli skådespelerske. Eller i varje fall att jag ville ägna mig åt teater på ett eller annat sätt. Jag minns att jag blev utskrattad. 
Sen har min förställning bara tilltag. I mitt förhållande till andra människor. I förhållande till männen. Samma konstanta förställning. Samma förtvilade försök att vara till lags. Jag har aldrig tänkt, vad är det jag vill? Abate disnegation of one's identity is accomplished through pleasing others, which at surface may appear altruistic and charitable from a certain viewpoint. Its outcome, as the premise for shadows, cannot in any way contribute to the satisfaction of the one enforcing it, Bergman suggests. In fact, Novalis concurs with this notion when he says that man has his being in truth. If he sacrifices truth, he sacrifices himself. Whoever betrays truth betrays himself. Hence, in the hope of attaining stability through this process, perhaps unknowingly by those practicing it, he is subverted by its rotten core that poisons and risks annihilating the individual. A malignant sense of falsity with self-defeating results is inevitable and acts as the source of a terrifying anxiety with seriously debilitating effects for one's autonomy and direction. At one point in persona, the doctor of Elisabeth Vogler, Liv Ullmann's character, makes an attempt to reach out to her, but with the typical Bergmanian brutal straightforwardness while shedding some light on the matter at hand. Tror du inte jag förstår den hopplösa drömmen om att vara, inte verka utan vara, i varje ögonblick medveten, baksam. Och samtidigt avgrunden mellan vad du är inför andra och vad du är inför dig själv. Svindelkänslan och den ständiga hungern att äntligen få bli avslöjad. Att få bli genomskådad, reducerad. Att få till och med utplånad. Varje tomfall en lögn, varje gest en förfalskning, varje leende en grimas. Ultimately, existing as a fraudulent body with fictitious character is destined to unwittingly generate a perplexing sense of detachment and act as a source of angst that will permanently undermine one's existence and will never allow pacification. Kierkegaard says in his book Purity of Heart is to Will One Thing that there is a danger that is called delusion, it is unable to check itself, it goes on and on, then it is called perdition. In the worst case scenario, such vulnerable position may even affect one to such an extent that could inspire thoughts of literal self-obliteration to end a suffering that cannot be further endured. In The Passion of Anna, one of the various sort of in-movie interviews with its actors, Bibi Anderson describes her character in a way that is likely to have been validated by Bergman himself, considering she shared with him an especially comprehensive insight of her role. For me, Eva is a woman who som jag tror till slut inte längre orkar med medvetenheten om sin egen sammanhangslöshet. Och detta att inte vara någon, att bara vara en produkt av andra gör en till. Och att aldrig egentligen få någon vila eller uppleva ett egenvärde. Det gör att jag tror att hon försöker begå självmord. Bergman's diagnosis and handling of this predicament may appear gloomy to many, but that only works as a verification of his authentic and compromising attitude to life and his work, an attitude that has always inspired him not to pull punches and aim for the most incisive, no-nonsense analysis of human character and condition, no matter how unsettling that may be, and which has decisively influenced the establishment of his name as belonging to one of cinema's greatest directors. This was the first of many explorations of Bergman's psychology and thought. In the meantime, check the other Bergman videos on this channel and you are welcome to like, comment, share or subscribe to the channel if you'd like to learn more about cinema from the world. As always, thank you for listening and see you next time.